Now I'm back with part two of King Known episode King Known Uncensored episode eight. Some records are meant to be broken part two. Now in the in part one we were breaking down the LeBron versus Kobe comparison because LeBron James just passed Kobe Bryant all time in scoring and now he is third in all time in scoring behind Karl Malone and um, Michael Jo I mean and Kareem Abdul Jabbar. My bad. Whew. It's 1.33 a.m. Boy, I am not on my shit like I normally am. But we're going to continue where we left off on uh, part one. So let's get into it, man. Let's stop playing. Let's go. All right. One thing that LeBron James obsessed fans, there's a difference. There are LeBron James fans that actually check LeBron when he's doing bad or not playing like himself or, you know, or just doing weak fuck shit. Um, basically, they like to say that Shaq carried Kobe. Which is why LeBron James is better because he has all three of his finals MVPs that he when he won the championship and everything. But at the same time, Kobe's first finals, he was 21. LeBron James got eliminated in seven games in the second round of the playoffs by Detroit in a weaker conference with weaker competition. So the statistics of the finals that they talk about as Shaq carried Kobe was when Kobe only averaged 16 points per game and Shaq averaged 38 and 17. But don't be fooled by the banana in the tailpipe trick to get you to thinking. A lot of y'all niggas wasn't into basketball yet. A lot of y'all old heads didn't start watching basketball until LeBron got in the league and a lot of y'all cats was still swimming around in nut sacks. I was around. I was watching basketball at a very young age. I was 11 when this happened in the 2000 finals. I was 11 years old. So I was competent and smart enough to know. Game one, Kobe scored 14 points. In game two, Kobe Bryant played nine minutes and injured his ankle in game two. Kobe did not play in game three, but however, in game four, when Shaquille O'Neal fouled out of the game, he came, came in and scored 28 points. Kobe Bryant had his worst game in game five. He, was only, he only had eight points and shot four of 20 from the field, which is terrible. Game six, Kobe closed out the series in six games as Kobe scored 26 points. So how does Shaq carry Kobe outside of game five, but they lost 87 to 120? Indiana just played well and was hot from the field. Everybody was hitting threes. And then who was who was checking Shaq? Rick Smith? That's easy money. Kobe was checked by multiple people in that series. He was he sometimes got guarded by Derek McKee who was a decent defender, by the way. Reggie Miller, who was pretty good. Jalen Rose was pretty good at defense and was playing with an injured ankle. But let's look at the playoff statistics. Let's see if Shaq really carried Kobe. Now, in the 2000 playoffs, Kobe averaged 21 points, four rebounds, and four assists per game. Shaquille O'Neal averaged 31 points, 15 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 blocks. In the 2001 playoffs, Kobe Bryant averaged 29 points per game, 7 rebounds per game, 6 assists, 2 steals, and 1 block. Shaquille, Shaquille O'Neal averaged 30 points, 15 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2 blocks per game. 2002 playoff statistics. Kobe Bryant averaged 27 points per game, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, 1 steal, 1 block. 
Shaquille O'Neal averaged 29 points, 13 rebounds, 3 assists, 3 point blocks per game. 2003 playoffs statistics. Kobe averaged 32 points per game, 5 rebounds per game, 5 assists per game, 1 assist, 1 steal per game. Shaquille O'Neal averaged 27 points, 15 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 blocks. 2004 playoff statistics. Kobe Bryant averaged 24 points per game, 5 rebounds, 5 assists per game. Shaquille O'Neal averaged 21 points per game, 13 rebounds, 2 assists, 3 blocks per game. So, due to this, you know, due to this... This is proof right here that Shaq only really technically carried Kobe one time. And Kobe still contributed 21 points per game in the first run to the championship. Everybody wants to bring up Kobe's four air balls and all that other shit. I just told you. If you look at Kobe's first two seasons. In Kobe's first season. Right? Let's bring that shit up for the one time. Bryant only averaged eight points per game in his first season. And he did not start but six games. In his second season, he, he averaged 15 a game off the bench and only started one game. And if you look at the guards that was on his team, if you look at that roster on the uh, 90, 96 Lakers... Let's look at it. You had Eddie Jones, Nick Van Exel, Byron Scott, Derek Fisher. This is his first year. Those are multiple guards that Bryant had to get playing time against. If you look at the next season. You had Eddie Jones, Nick Van Exel, Derek Fisher, John Barry. So he was probably the the uh, second or third guard on the depth chart. All right, let's get back to it, though. Now, if you look at the competition that Kobe had during those three championships in 2000, 2001, and 2002... Look at who was checking them. Todd McCullough, who averaged seven, no, who averaged eight points per game and five rebounds per game. These are the centers that Shaq played against. Jason Collins, who averaged four points per game and three rebounds per game. Dikembe Mutombo, who averaged 17 points and 12 rebounds against them and two blocks per game. And Todd McCullough was the backup center on that 2001 76ers team. Rick Smith, 10 points per game, 4 rebounds. Dale Davis, eight, 9 points per game and 10 rebounds. And this is the competition that Kobe faced off against at his position. Reggie Miller, who averaged 24 points per game and 4 assists per game. Allen Iverson, who averaged a whopping 36 points per game, 6 rebounds per game, 4 assists per game. And Kerry Kittles, who was his weakest competition, who averaged 13 points per game and 3 assists per game. So, in those three final series, Shaquille O'Neal pretty much dominated his competition. And Kobe, with stiffer competition, still put up numbers in all of those finals. I mean, Shaq admitted himself that he was lazy. I have a kid that can get me 40 a game. Why should I have to play hard? And then, when Kobe and Shaq split up, Kobe Bryant won two more championships without, you know, without Shaquille O'Neal. And Shaq only has one without him. If you look at Kobe's teams compared to Shaq's teams... He was on what? A 61 win Cavs team? Right? If you look at Bryant's teams who won the championship, 
I believe it was 09, they were 65 and 17, which is pretty solid. 09, 010, they were 57 and 25, which is pretty good. But is Pal Gasol and Andrew Bynum, were they ever better than Dwayne Wade? I don't think so. Now you could get you can look at the role players. The Lakers probably had better role players. I can agree with that, but Jason Williams and Antoine Walker were balling in that series in 06 against the Mavericks. Pau Gasol contributed. Don't get me wrong. But is he better than Shaq? No. Is he on Shaq's level? No. Is Pau Gasol a top 50 all-time player? No. Is Dwayne Wade a top 15, top 50 all-time player? You damn right he is. I'm just being real. You got to think about this shit. Now, don't let this statistic fool you. LeBron James, four MVPs, three finals MVPs. Kobe Bryant, one MVP, and two finals MVPs. Because his standboy fanboys will say LeBron's better because LeBron has more MVPs and finals MVPs. I can debunk that easily as well. Two of LeBron's MVPs are debatable. LeBron's MVP was only given to him because the Cavs had won 66 games that season. But as far as the better individual season, Dwayne Wade's 2008 and 2009 season was more impressive. And LeBron also had a better team than Dwayne Wade as well. Obviously, the records show that. Dwayne Wade that season averaged 30 points per game, 8 assists per game, and 5 rebounds per game. As LeBron averaged his regular career numbers, which is 28 points per game, 7 assists per game, and 8 rebounds per game. Wade was clearly robbed of this MVP due to favoritism. And the Heat made the playoffs this season. Wade to be a 6'4 guard who was a scorer first to put up these numbers and average eight assists per game, I think it's more impressive to me. And then also 2012-2013 MVP. Now, I would have gave LeBron the MVP, but I think Carmelo Anthony put had a better, had well, not a better case, but I, had, I think he made a case for MVP as Melo averaged 29 points per game, seven rebounds per game, and three assists per game to LeBron's 27 eight rebounds, seven assists per game. But the but Melo had led the Knicks to the second best record in the East during conference with 54 games. But if you look at Kobe Bryant, he only has one MVP, but he was robbed of multiple MVPs. We could go down the line here. Now, I understand that Steve Nash made the playoffs and Phoenix was good, right? But 2004, Kobe Bryant got a rape case. And even though he was not guilty, the media, when you when you are accused of something, they're going to hate you. And they're going to uh, disregard what you did in that season because they hate you because you were accused of something as heinous as rape. But at the same time... Kobe Bryant in the 04-05 season averaged 27, no, 28 points per game, 6 rebounds per game, and 6 assists per game. And Steve Nash averaged 16 points per game and 12 assists per game. Now, for what Steve Nash's position is, this is pretty debatable. Nash made the playoffs. Kobe's team did not. But, you know, it's hard to maximize the likes of Kwame Brown, Smush Parker, Chris Mim, Jordan Farmar, and Sasha Vujicic with Rudy Tomjanovic as the coach. So I think that was, you know, that eliminated Kobe's chance of winning. Now the 05-06 season, Kobe Bryant averaged 35 points per game, 5 assists per game, and 5 rebounds per game. And Steve Nash 
Averaged 19 points per game and 11 assists per game. <clears throat> this is the year that Kobe put up against 81 against the, Ra the Raptors. And 81 is obviously second most points all time in one game. And he led that sorry ass team to the seventh seed in the West in the playoffs. Nash had way more talent on his team. Even with the loss of Amari Stoudemire that season, it was five other players who averaged more than 10 points per game. And Sean Marion had a career year averaging 22 points per game and 12 rebounds per game. Hell, he was the better choice up for MVP than Nash. And he also and Marion also averaged two steals per game and two blocks per game. And he was also a can a good candidate for defensive player of the year. So Kobe was robbed in 2006. Let's continue in the 06-07 season. Kobe Bryant averaged where, like I said, the other person that I compare Kobe to is the MVP for that season. Disclaimer. All right. So Kobe Bryant in 2006-2007 season averaged 32 points per game, 5 assists per game, and 6 rebounds per game, while Dirk Nowitzki averaged 25, who won the MVP, averaged 25 points per game, 3 points per game, and 9 rebounds per game. They had the best record in the league. I, I get that. But Golden State beat them in the first round. And Don Nelson pretty much exposed Dallas and Dirk that season. And yes, this was the season that Kobe didn't take any shots in the second half of Game 7 of the first round of the playoffs. But... Phil took the responsibility in his book called 11 Rings, saying that he wanted to get Lamar Odom and Smush, I mean, Lamar Odom and Kwame Brown the ball in the post more. And that didn't work out for them, did it? Now, I would have gave the MVP in 09-010 to LeBron James, but hey, Kobe had a great season as well. You can make a case for him in the the uh, 09-010 season where Kobe Bryant averaged 27 points per game, 5 rebounds per game, and 5 assists, while LeBron James averaged 30 points per game, 7 uh, rebounds per game, and 9 assists per game. With this in mind, Kobe should have ended his career with at least three to five MVPs. Now, another thing that people use to say that LeBron is better than Kobe is in the regular season, LeBron is 16 and six against Kobe Bryant in the regular season, head to head. Meanwhile, during the era that LeBron played in versus Kobe, LeBron has always had the better team than Bryant most of his career. So you really can't use this, argu this argument. That's a, it's a team sport. Their one-on-one -on -one matchup numbers-wise are even. But if you look up the footage of these matchups, including the All-Star game, the eye test showed when LeBron was defended by Kobe, LeBron was forcing his shots and appearing timid. You can look up that video. Now, if you look at the records of Kobe and LeBron's teams from 2003 to 2016 where Kobe you know played while they were playing you know what I'm saying LeBron James had a better supporting cast LeBron James's team's records from 2003 to 2016 are 683 and 367 that 60 LeBron James teams have won 65% of their games meanwhile Kobe Bryant's teams were 564 and 486 that is 54% of their the teams that Kobe played on won 53 no 54% of their games that's proof right there yes Kobe played with a top 10 player all time in Shaq, 
but LeBron has played with guys just as talented as Kobe's team. Kobe didn't get a chance to play with a prime Kyrie Irving, a prime Kevin Love, a prime Chris Bosh, a prime Dwayne Wade, and Shaq only played with Kobe one out of those 13 seasons while LeBron was in the league. Meanwhile, 2011 through 14, you know, he played with Wade and Bosh, 2014 through 2016, LeBron played with Love and Kyrie. LeBron was also on better defensive teams than Bryant during the 06 through 011 season. And when guarded by each other, this is a stat right here. LeBron James, when guarded by Kobe Bryant, shoots 27% from the field, while Kobe Bryant shoots 52% from the field when guarded by LeBron James. Now look at the competition that they had to endure. I'm just going to bring up certain years. If you look at the 2000-2001 season, Kobe Bryant had to endure a Western Conference when the 10th seed Seattle Supersonics were 44-38, and y'all. And the 8th seed that year was the Minnesota Timberwolves who were 47-35. and And if you look at more 07 and 08 season, the Denver Nuggets were 50 and 32 as an 8 seed. Golden the the Portland Trail Blazers as a 10 seed was 41 and 41. And then 07 and 08, he had to go through this conference without Bynum. This is just with Gasol. LeBron James has never played a 50 win 8 seed. If you look at 2000, 2009 and 2010 season, OKC won 50 games that season. And the Rockets were, as a ninth seed, were 42 and 40. If you look at LeBron James. If you look at LeBron James's playoff run, right? He played in a mediocre Eastern Conference when there was only like maybe three to four teams that can make a run for the NBA Finals and actually beat a Western Conference team. When LeBron went to eight straight finals, who was the best team that they played? Record, I mean, you can technically say the Boston Celtics were maybe that team. But they were old as fuck. LeBron can't walk through the East. Overall, Kobe Bryant has eliminated 24-50 win teams in the playoffs. LeBron has only defeated 13 50-win teams. Kobe has never faced a team with a losing record in the playoffs. LeBron James has faced seven. LeBron James did beat a 73-9 team in 2016. But Kobe Bryant is 25-10 against 50-win teams, and LeBron James is 12-8 against 50 win teams. As far as I'm concerned, in conclusion, with all that being said, I rank Kobe Bryant third all time. I mean, he's got five championships. You know what I'm saying? He's got a lot. He He's just an overall better player than LeBron James. He's had more success in a tougher conference. And he stood up to adversity and conquered on multiple occasions. Meanwhile, LeBron James has lost six NBA Finals. Four out of those six were, I consider, to be winnable. I think LeBron should be 6-3 and three in the Finals, personally. 
I feel like he should have definitely won in 2011. He should have won in 2014 because this was the same team that he played the year before. And they beat the, the Heat by a record margin. And there's a video on B-Ball Breakdown on YouTube that showed that LeBron James stat padded that entire 2014 NBA Finals. These are facts. I'm not hating at all. This is real shit. Okay, the 2015 Finals. Yeah, I know they lost Kevin Love. Kyrie played in game one and he missed the last four games. I understand that. But I still feel like he, they had a chance of winning that series. And I can break that down for you before I get up out of here. Game one, he had 44 points. And he attempted 38 shots. And Kyrie played and they won. Game two, LeBron had 39 points off 35 shots in a win in Golden State. So he had enough. Game three, 40 points on 34 attempts and a loss. So now they were up 2-1. Oh, yeah. I forgot. They lost game one. Oh, yeah. So they did win game three. All right. So they were up 2-1. They beat Golden State in Golden State. Won game one. So they had home field event. Home court advantage, I mean. Game four. This is crucial. You're in Cleveland at the queue. This is back when the finals format was 2-3-2. Two, two. So you had three straight games. You could have closed this team out in five fucking games. And you didn't do it. In a crucial game four where you could t put go up 3-1, you only scored 20 points and shot 22, 7 of 22 from the field and got blown out by 21. So pass the sticks. Game five, you scored 40 points. 34 shot attempts. Not enough to win the game. It was close, though. So I give him the benefit of the doubt for game five. Game six, with a chance to extend the series and get a Game 7 in Cleveland. I mean, a Game 7 in Golden State. Golden State wins. So, I believe that even though the team was condensed, I feel like Tyron Lu was an issue for that because he didn't go more than seven deep. I think if Sean Marion would have got on the fucking floor, maybe they could have Push Golden State. Mind you, this is before Kevin Durant. 2017-2018 uh, Cavaliers, they weren't going to fucking beat Golden State with Kevin Durant. There's no fucking way. I understand that part. But Kobe only losing twice in the finals. And LeBron losing six of them. Everybody got to eat in LeBron's era. From Steph Curry to Kobe Bryant to Kevin Garnett to the motherfucking um, Warriors to the to the Spurs. Michael Jordan, when he was playing, that motherfucker ain't let you eat. And then as far as Kobe's era goes, it was only the Pistons in San Antonio that ate in Kobe's era. And then you got a glimpse of the Miami Heat. But Kobe and Tim Duncan dominated their eras together on their respective teams. And Shaq gets a glimpse into that era where he was the most dominant big man in the game. But other than that, I'm done with this conversation. I'm no longer going to have this conversation with motherfuckers, especially dick-sucking Faggot ass LeBron fans. I'm just gonna tag them in this video. This is King Known, episode 8. Some records were meant to be broken, part 2. And I'm out this bitch.